Tenchi here. Today we're going to talk about C++, more specifically ANSI C++, which means that no matter what platform you are working on, no matter what you're trying to put this on, it's going to work. My little brother uses a Mac. Um, I don't have a Mac. So, I'm going to help you Mac guys out. Ever since OS X 10.3, you guys have had a program included in the operating system called Xcode. <laughs> Thanks, Apple. Um, in the comments uh, for the video for this video, I have linked to a tutorial on the basics of how to use it, how to set up a project, as well as the developer's site, which has a nice introduction to it as well. Shows you a lot of the nice features. Goes through it pretty well. Now, for you Linux guys. And if you're on Windows, you can use this too. I suggest a program called Guinea. Now, it's it's not quite as complex as some of those editors out there that are fairly congested, if you ask me. But, it's got all the things that you really need. From your symbol browser, so that you can get to your uh, functions and your variables quickly, to a terminal to even just a scribble pad so you can jot down notes. And it's got a mild uh, amount of IntelliSense which is going to help you uh, keep you from having to retype things over and over again too. So that should be helpful. Now let's get into the code. I'm going to be using Emacs <coughs> today, uh, getting you guys a little bit more comfortable with the command line. Uh, now in Linux, and I'm guessing in OS X as well, if you if you notice that that main.cpp, that's the file we're trying to get to. Now, if I hit tab, it'll autocomplete since there aren't any other files that are any closer to it than that. So now I can just press enter, and boom, we're in the file. Now, this first line is a single line comment. Now. With a single line comment, you do the slash slash, and from that point on, in that one line, it's a comment, which means it's not going to get compiled into your code, which means you can put any, any kind of notes that you want into there about that line. Now, if you do a slash star, or slash, slash asterisk, it will open up a multi-line comment. Um, this is going to allow you to make a comment block. So, for instance, for your licensing, uh, like I have right here, as well as if you want to describe, say, what this function that you're about to write does, or what this class does, you can put it in there. Now, you close it off with another star and then a slash, so the opposite of how you started it. Now, this pound include is what's called a preprocessor command. What's gonna, what this means is, it before anything else gets um, processed, this is going to get processed. So before anything else happens, it's going. This is uh, the the compiler is going to include IO stream. Uh, now these brackets around IO stream are going to tell it that it needs to look in the standard location, which is typically an includes folder somewhere on your hard drive. It's going to vary depending on. Um, what what you're using, uh, whether it be Linux, Mac, uh, and what f what items in Windows. <coughs> now, since this is a standard library, and I don't feel like typing STD and sp in specific places uh, to be able to use its components, I'm going to tell the compiler that I'm using the namespace from within this library called STD. Now notice this semicolon. Anytime you make a statement in C++, you have to put a semicolon at the end of it. So now that we've got our uh, our library initialized and loaded in, we're going to be able to start actually writing the code for our program. Now this structure right here is declaring the main function. The main function is what actually gets called when you call your program. So main is the name of the function, and then everything in between these two 
parentheses are the parameters that get brought in. So if I did the name of the function and its base and put some sort of uh, arguments or parameters into the program, it would get sent to our code through these two variables. Now an int is an integer or a whole number. Um, it can either, in this sense, it can either be positive or negative. If it's unsigned, it can only be positive. We'll get into that later. Um, but what this uh, parameter right here is, is the count of our arguments. And then this is a string of characters uh, named argv, which is going to actually be all of those arguments that we get in. Now, this main function is going to return or output an integer. It's going to output data of the type integer. So it's going to output a whole number. Now that we've declared our function, we're going to define it in between these two brackets. The curly brackets let the compiler know that this is the actual block of code that needs to be executed every time we call main. So, now that we're in the code, cout is actually from this IO stream library. It's an it's what's called an object. Um, C++ is an object-oriented language. We'll get more into that later, though. Now, these <coughs> these pointers uh, or uh, these symbols right here indicate that we're going to send this string of characters into this object, and it's going and then it in turn is going to output that to the screen. So after we've sent this string of characters into that object onto the screen, we're going to send onto the screen an end line. Now this again is is defined in this library. Um, but what it's going to do is not only end this line of text, but it's also going to flush the buffer. Um, now what that means is it's going to push everything that we've put prior to it out to the screen immediately. Um, with streams, whenever you're dealing with streams, it's important to, to flush them. Now, don't forget your semicolon. Now that we've done what we need to do in this function, we need to return out of it. So we'll return um, our variable that we, that we want to get back from the function which in this case is a zero, which is the standard I'm okay, everything went okay return. Well, for int anyways. So again, have your semicolon. So, we've got our code, we're gonna save it out, but there weren't any changes, and then we're gonna exit. Now, for uh, Linux and you Mac guys, you're gonna be able to type G++, the name of the file that you wanna compile, and then the output name that you want the executable to be named. So dash out, and then we want it to be named hello when we actually make the program. Press enter. And we notice that there aren't any error messages, which means it compiled successfully. Now, this dot means that in this present folder, in the current folder, in other words, in my desktop, I'm going to run hello. Hello world. So that's been a, a basic introduction to uh, C++. Uh, you Mac guys, don't forget to check out that Xcode. It seems to be a pretty pretty nice little setup. Uh, if you've got any questions or comments, if there's uh, anything I didn't go into up to this point in programming that you are curious about, uh, feel free to ask. Um, I'm going to be putting out a lot of these tutorials. My little brother is is interested in programming, so I figured out I would share it both with him and with you guys. Um, especially since me and him don't don't live together, obviously. But um, so please leave comments. Uh, feel free to rate. Hopefully, this has been helpful to you guys. I'll see you guys later.